Hey, what is up, guys? This is Corbo. Welcome to a couple of tournament games from the recent Mini Americas tournament. This one again from Cheeseburger. <laughs> Going up against Steel Sane in the semi finals. Man, Cheeseburger, I love this guy's opener. Let me tell you the truth. Not cast one of Cheeseburger's games before, I don't think. He's playing some speed specialist action and going for a standard style layout with the sledgehammers. Now, me personally, when I run Steel's, uh, sorry, um, sledgehammers plus the crawlers, I like to have. A standard setup like this, right? Instead, hammers in the middle, crawlers behind the sledgey so that they really spread out as they run through the sledgehammers. Um, it's awesome. Steel Sane, running some Rhino Specialist, but in spite of Rhino Special, going for a much, much more standard layout as well. It actually looks like Cheeseburger is still mixing up his formation just a little bit. Um, Steel Sane, on the other hand, Rhino Special, Tarantulas, a couple of marksmen come down. Curiously enough, uh, has his opening unit. A little bit risky, with Cheeseburger also going into additional chaff. I almost wouldn't have been surprised to just see even more crawlers come out from Cheeseburger, to be honest, and he was just to flood the board in a very, very wide uh, and even, like, aggressive formation pattern with just a crap load of crawlers, but looks like just going for something a little bit more standard. Um, yeah. Interesting to see how this one is going to pan out. So let's go ahead and do this, man. Crawlers a little bit central. Speed special means he's going to close the gap quite quickly. Be interesting, it all just comes down to how much value these maxmen are going to get. Maxman on the left side does get to latch on the tanks on this side, just because of how the chaff were positioned. And so we do lose, what, two sledges on the left side? Shouldn't be quite enough, I don't think. Then again, the chaff dies a lot faster on the right side. The trench are actually lasting quite a bit longer uh, all up and over here. But it looks like a pretty solid victory for the cheeseburger himself on the left flank, man. Let's go ahead and speed along through this. Just one maximum left, one fang left over here. It's going to be a win for our speed specialist gentleman, which I just love, by the way. I don't think there'll ever be a more fun specialist than just speed special. There's something about just building super fast units and rushing your opponent down that never doesn't, it, it, it just never stops feeling satisfying. But okay, a couple of tanks are going to get to live. They're not quite going to get the rank 2 here. Uh, which is a little bit sad for blue. It's all such a big advantage if you can get one of your kind of like mid-tier units. Steel Bulls, Sledges, Mustangs, whatever. Up to a rank 2 right away. But we do get the reinforcement round immediately. This could change things up. I wonder if we'll get any Farseer takers here. Um, Wasps. For blue, they don't feel much like an option, given that the tanks are, like, the core unit. Um, Steel Balls feels very, very risky for both sides. Farseer. Any takers for the Farseer, man. I'd love to see some Farseer action. Um, I don't think that we're going to get to see it, though. Acolytes for Steel Sin. Additional chaff clear. He sees the amount of chaff coming down from blue. He's just going to start to take care of that right away. Wow. So it's going to be a sell, right? We are going to keep the Steel Balls? Wow, dude. I did not expect that. Let's see if it comes off, man. This could be really, really cool if this actually comes off and we're able to make the Steel Balls work uh, like this. Hell, maybe Cheeseburger was just thinking, you know what? Maybe Red is going to go into something like the Arc Lights and stuff like that and just try and take care of my chaff and the Steel Balls will actually get to latch uh, on some of the Arcies and they're a really, really good answer uh, to the Arc Lights at this stage of the game, so... Could be pretty tight, man. 350 supply left to spend for blue. Meanwhile, just a lot of additional chaff coming out for Steel Sin. Smart positioning as well. Crawlers behind the towers like this. Um, making it very, very likely that they're going to split off into two groups. Like so. And wow, dude. Holy crap. Okay, Cheeseburger are doing a lot to diversify up his army. On this left side. In particular... The thing behind the Stormcallers, I mean, they're really good into Fangs, Tarantulas, and the Maxman. Okay, dude. I mean, I like it. I actually, I actually don't mind it. Again, one of the best things that you can do in the earlier stages of Mechabellum games, just in general, is... You know, I'm going to put on automatic camera for some games, man. Is just diversify your army as much as you possibly can. Stormcallers and Steel Balls in the same round. That's one way to do it, you know? We've already got mixed chaff on the field, of course, for both players as well. And now I'm just remembering why I don't usually let the camera go automatic, because it starts to zoom in. Then you get really, really loud game sounds going. <laughs> and it's hard to hear myself think, you know. 
But dude, the Steel Pulse actually finding so much value that they might even hit a level 3 this round, which would be crazy as hell. In fact, they might get to latch on something like the Acolyte over here. I think if they get the Acolyte kill, then they will get the rank 2. Are they able to do it? Oh, they do just get the... Uh, sorry, not the rank 2, the rank 3. So potentially level 3 Steel Balls coming out. That's almost certainly levels on the tanks coming out as well. So honestly, good level advantages coming out for Cheeseburglar. Supply enhancement becomes available. Good to go if you're ahead in the game. Good long-term investment. He does agree and actually goes for it. Meanwhile, absorption module coming out for Steel Sane and a double Stormcaller drop. Okay, man. Either player just kind of mirroring Stormcallers at this point. Dude... Stormcallers feels like one of those units, you miss them when they're gone. But they're so seldom gone. They feel like such a just, a, just a staple good unit to have in your army. Bait your opponent into going anti-missile tech and stuff, but if they don't respond to them, then you can surprise your opponent with a couple more Stormcallers coming down, and then like launch your overload or fire missiles or whatever, you know? Okay, additional chaff. We're also seeing blue double down a little bit uh, on the sledgehammers. Which is quite interesting. We'll go ahead and slow the game speed just a little bit at this stage. I'm curious to see what value these Stormcallers get. Stormcallers tend to have mixed results into Sledgehammers insofar as I can tell. Um, the Acolyte here is going to do a really good job of clearing up all of the chaff and exposing these boys potentially to the Stormies. But never mind, they're getting stuck hitting the level 3 Steel Balls. Which are finding some extra value over here too. As you take out the maximum, there's still a few balls still left alive. I can't believe the value they're finding, man. Like, wow, dude. I really did. I. There you go. This is why I enjoy watching players that are just better at the video game than myself. You know? Players that I wouldn't even consider. Just picking up some casual steel balls. Not investing any tech in them so far. And just letting them have it. We still might see these steel balls get sold in uh, future rounds, by the way. As long as there's not a tech invested in these guys. Then they're just going to be a thorn in Steel Sin's side. Um, that he doesn't really want to build units expressly to counter the Steel Balls. Because there's only one pack of them. And they don't have any tech investment. You know, they could be sold at any time. Uh, at basically no cost to blue. Sledgehammers, Stormcallers, all finding levels. But now the Rhino comes down from Steel Sin. So he's basically been playing, oh my god, Extendy Sledgehammer range. Cheeseburger, come on dude. I will remember your name. Y y your name will go down in the annals of history if in a semi-final of a tournament we see some mega giga range. Carry sledgehammers, man. Come on, dude. You've got three packs of those suckers. They've got upgrades ready to go as well, I can see just behind here. The timers now. Nothing else is even remotely good here. I mean, nano repair kit on the steel bolts could be really good. Steel Saint actually goes for the nano repair. Cheeseburglar, he's still, he's tempted between what's right and what's glorious. Let's put it like that, man. No, he went for what's right. Oh, God damn it. Okay, so yeah, we do see the nano repair coming down on the steel balls. Oh, man. Oh, God dog, man. I thought we were going to get to see something utterly glorious just now, but okay. Oh, but look, man, they even run Electromag. Oh, it's so good. Like, extended range sledgehammers with range enhancement, Electromag. Few levels, you only need like four packs of them. They do an incredible job, man. I'm a huge, huge believer, but alas, we also see the nano repair come out uh, forced. Oh, not the nano repair, sorry. That's the uh, absorption module, one of the trenchers. I wonder what Steel Sin's plan is for the nano repair then. Goes on the scorpion, and the rhino was actually sold to fund extra scorpions coming out. So we're seeing big answers. Well, not big answers, actually very, very efficient and smart answers coming out to deal with the steel balls. And we're actually seeing more Steel Balls Elite recruited coming out from blue. Yeah, Scorpions, I always forget about the Scorpions, their ability to just eviscerate Steel Balls. Even rank 3 Steel Balls, even rank 4 or rank 5 Steel Balls, I think, are one-shotted by level 1 Scorpions. It's a very, very one-sided trade. Okay, no, not one-shotted. Yeah, these level 3 Steel Balls will live with, like, what, 3,000 health or something? I'm completely just mixing up my numbers, but... They're a very, very deadly counter, is what I'm saying. They can one-shot level 2 Steel Balls, is what I meant to say. Ooh, so they're not actually going to get the kill on these guys. They get them kind of low, and that is going to finish them off in the end. On the right side, the Steel Balls really finding no value at all over here, and so the Scorpion's just sort of stopping this mid-range army dead in its tracks. 
I think what Blue really needs to take out these big single target entities, the Acolytes, the Tarantulas, even the Maxman to some extent, and of course now with the Scorpions on red, what Blue could really use and what he's missing, I feel, Phoenix's men. I feel Phoenix's would make a big, big difference. He would have killed to have some Phoenix's on his side going into this battle, man. Oh my god, the Steel Ball doesn't get the kill on the Tarantula either. And good old Steel Sin is swinging back, man. Okay, dudes. All right, man. The plot thickens. Steel Sin holds for the first round. This could be a lot of XP going his way as well. Stormcallers are able to go up to level 2, but it's another unit drop round. And the game just gives Blue the Phoenixes. Overlords are an option. Bit riskier because they're already maxman on the board. Phoenixes feel a little bit easier to protect because of that enhanced range. Um, Steel Sin going for the Wasps. Maybe preempting. Maybe just preempting that either Phoenixes or Wasps are coming out. I'd be very, very intrigued. Okay. Steel Sin does not run anti air Wasps. And ooh, we go for the Overlord strat instead. Wow, man. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, I, I think it's fine. I think it's fine. Uh, we do also run Fort on a mission on these Overlords as well. And so maybe that's part of the strat. Rush in with like Mech Ridge, Sledgehammers and Steelies, fought on a mission and just bum rush. Because we are playing Speed Specialist, we can do stuff like that. Um, that is in our power. Meanwhile, plus range is coming out on the Tarantulas for Steel Sand. Not too many levels on the Tarantulas just yet. And still no plus range on the Scorpions. Was there not another Scorpion over here on this right side? My memory just playing tricks on me. I could have swore there was another scorpion over here. I guess I was just misreading that last round. Okay. Double overlord drop comes out. This is a pretty heavy committal. So the wasps will get... Um, dealt with quite efficiently by the overlords overall. Hmm. The real question is, do we have enough chaff clear as blue to deal with the crawlers and the late arrivals of chaff that are coming in? To actually allow the overlords to hit important targets. That's what this that's what this is really gonna come down to, right? Here comes the wasps. They will get latched on pretty quickly indeed, actually. They push to the front pretty fast. Overlord on the far left side also finding pretty good value against some of the ground units over there too, then dealing with some of the wasps as well. I'd say that the overlords are doing pretty okay, man. They're doing not bad. But now here comes the good old Maxman. Connecting on both of these guys. Hmm. And as such, that is a number. Did they get enough done for the cash investment? I mean, they dealt with the wasps somewhat efficiently. Okay. Advanced shield. Super supply enhancement. Yeah, I guess Blue's not feeling as confident to go for super, uh, super supply enhancement anymore. Advanced missile device. Hmm. Just peek at what each player is actually doing and is up to. Wow, Steel Sin feeling hugely confident. Go for the super supply uh, enhancement after winning the past couple rounds. I mean, hell, dude. It feels like he's ahead in this matchup just now. That he's out diversified his opponent a little bit. That he's got the positive trades going. I can see it, man. This could propel his lead. Meanwhile, Blue just going to go ahead and skip. He's going to spread out the crawlers, making them much, much less vulnerable now. Uh, against the Tarantulas, which are the Chaff Clear of choice, of course. Okay. Oh, God. Yeah, I'm not sure what Blue does now to start to peel his way back from this, actually. How the hell do you even deal with this? Mustangs? The Mustangs are fine. Give them plus range instead of aerial specialization. I think that's also fine. It's going to keep them relatively safe. They're also going to stay just behind the crawlers and shouldn't get caught by uh, Stormcaller missiles, which are some of the biggest threat right now. It's just, I feel like we just, like, these these overlords, they're not dealing with the ground units. They're not quite ground giants, but you know what I mean, right? The big chunky ground units. They're not quite dealing with them smoothly enough, quickly enough, right? There's only two maxmen on field, for God's sake, you know? But these maxmen have all of the time in the world. To target lock on these overlords currently. Okay. 
So the crawlers coming in in that spread formation pattern does make them last quite a bit longer, which is great. It's doing something for them. The chaff battle is about equal-ish as it stands right now, but now that the scorpions get to connect on the- Oh my god, now that the scorpions get to connect on the sledges, things begin to turn the other direction very, very quickly indeed. That said, the maximum does get to go down on this far right side over here, so at least on the left while we're getting a little bit pulverized, blue is going to get to break through over here, but ah, it's just too late, man. Till what end? Even if we get this goddamn tarantula dead and the building dead, there's just nothing left, man. It's just one overlord against everything. Could maybe consider Overlord Artillery here. Um, if you want to double down on the Overlord route. That could be a thing that we push, a button that we push. Uh, as blue? I think I actually quite like that play. Overlord Artillery, more chaff. Um, we could also look into potentially just getting a couple flanks going, or even just one flank going and just distracting one side a little bit. Buys a little bit more time to get into effective range. Hmm. Oh my god. And while I'm rambling, I actually completely forgot about the nano repair kit on the goddamn Overlord and just kills everything. Because <laughs> that's the thing that just happened. Okay. Oh my god, another super supply enhancement? Is Steel seeing crazy enough to go for two? That, that would just be too funny. That may just be ridiculous. Um, shielded airdrop, can anybody get a flank going here? Not really, the wasp and the crawlers are covering every flank for both players, right? Oh, they both picked so fast. Oh, wow. So blue actually went for supply enhancement this time. Oh, not super supply enhancement. I think that he just skipped then in the end. Okay, he just skipped in the end. Meanwhile, the nuke coming out for steel same. And instead of the- okay, so instead of overlord artillery, we go for range on the overlords. And we do go the heavy overlord route. I'm not sure the range is going to have as much effect. Steel Sin is actually... The reason I don't think the range is going to have as much effect, by the way, just to back that up a little bit, is... It's not increasing the firepower of the Overlords that much, and it's not going to help keep the Overlords alive against the Maxman. At the end of the day, they're just going to like match the Maxman's range now, so if we lose the Chaff Battle, which we are going to here with the Oil Player and the Nuke, I fear that the Overlords are just as vulnerable to the maximum now, whereas at least with Launcher Overlord, they'd be able to kind of rush in and just kill off all of these ground units very, very quickly at least. Drastically increases their rate of fire uh, and their ability to just, to just kill medium-sized units, right? But the nuke is going to come out. Will this Overlord in the middle dodge the nuke? Oh, God, I think it might be... Okay, it might be just safe. Might be just safe. By the way, I should also point out that Steel saying it looks to me like he's trying to just win the game. This round, the nuke player, the oil investment, the man has invested a lot of supply into just getting a big victory this round. Now, if blue can survive and recuperate, then all of a sudden, Steel Sin is not going to have the oil, the fire and the flames to rely on and to lean on anymore. It looks like the overlords might be just about doing enough here in terms of just deleting nerds to mid. Oh my god, one crawler is distracting the goddamn mothership over here, dude. Oh, God, that's just so sad. That's so sad to see, dude. Oh, yo, 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 yo. Okay, let's speed this one along just a little bit. Uh, again, this is like the self-healing overlord, right? There's nothing else that- there's nothing that can kill it. There's nothing that can kill it, man. It's just healing too hard. Okay, so the range of the overlords and the overlord drops did actually make enough of a difference for us to hold on to this, which is very, very impressive. That said, it's not a complete loss for Steel Sin. A lot of his barriers took a solid amount of damage, but all survived, meaning they're all going to heal up to full health uh, next round, which is good news for him. But ooh, you do get the sense that Steel Sin kind of wanted to end the game uh, with that round and finish this thing. Oh my god! What is this, dude? He could go for the nuke player again. Steel Saiyan could go for the nuke player again, bro. Wow. He does. Oh my god. Wow, man. And now Cheese Bagel actually goes into the extended range sledgehammers after all. Ooh, we go for the wasp production on the overlords. Okay. So one thing that I did just want to draw some attention to is that actually I'll 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 wait for just a second so we see what everybody is up to here. Um oh my god, another overlord comes down and it's right in the middle. Oh, that's just that's just unlucky for the poor cheese bagel, man. 
That's just losing a 50-50 right there. In fact, a lot of these stangs are going to run straight into this as well. Yeah, this could be really quite devastating. This could be quite a devastating nuke right here. Oof. Damn. Okay, but uh, yeah, one thing I did want to mention, as both players have spent almost all of what they got here, um, is that as soon as you've gone into range enhancement on your Overlord, Overlord Artillery loses like 50% of its value. Uh, the Overlord Artillery only has a range of 120 meters, whereas as soon as you've got range enhancement up and running, that's an extra 40 range. You're looking at, I mean, without the uh, enhanced range button being pushed. What I'm saying is the range of your Overlord is longer with its basic attack than the Overlord Artillery. So you actually get into situations sometimes where you're trading with like an enemy Marksman or a Melting Point or something, and your Overlord is stopping short of being able to even use its Overlord Artillery, which is real bad, but here we go, man. Oh my god, it's gonna be a triple whammy on this nuke. I like the Wasp production play coming out from the Overlords. Oh god. I mean, that's it. That's gotta be game, right? That's just too devastating. It's too devastating. We got away with it on the first uh, on the first round. Gains one of those weaknesses of going like a heavy air army. So, so difficult to protect them. From the nukes. From lots of... Uh, Battlefield spells, to be fair. And we just have the one Overlord now trying to get the job done. Meanwhile, as well, additional Marksman did come out with Aerial Specialization, which I totally missed from Steel Sin. So even our super self-healing Overlord on the far side, not able to get it done. Okay. Oh my god, man. The double nuke play from Steel Sin. Dude. Holy crap. That's one way to get yourself into the final. Okay, man. Let's check out how that went. And all right, what is this sorcery going on in the final just now, man? Holy crap, not even going to try to pronounce Blue's name. I apologize. I'm just going to call him Sergeant Blue. How about that? Who is dropping the turn one wasps? Man isn't even playing aerial specialist, man. Supply specialist, round one wasps, going up against Steel Sane, who is playing... What's Steel Sane actually playing? Fortified specialist. Okay, man. Maybe we're going to be looking at some tanky tanks in this game, but either which way, like the crawler positioning, nice and split. Stormcaller's going to struggle to find value against these guys, at least until they stop moving uh, just here. And I think the tanks, I mean, this this side is going to be a real struggle. I mean, of course, Blue is going to, uh, is going to take the round one win anyway, just because of the nature of, you know, wasps. But in this far right side, Stormcaller's not the most reliable. Getting Sledgy's dead, at least not until they've got a crazy, crazy level advantage. And, um, yeah. Blue getting to take this round one win. What kind of crap is he running on the Wasp? No Elite Maximum, so we're not going to see any crazy, crazy carry Wasp memes. That said, he is running the Jump Drive, which I'm seeing everybody use recently, by the way. Just playing, like, one pack of Wasps by the Jump Drive and just switch sides with them every round. You know, that's it. Uh, keep your opponent guessing, all of that. His module comes out for blue. Is that actually going to go on the wasps? Oh my god. So these are some mega, mega move speed wasps now. Crazy, crazy move speed. Steel Sane is going to respond with the stangs. He can't afford to get them on both sides though. And so the switcheroo is actually going to go down. Just like we described with that jump drive. Switching up the wasps positioning. They now have 26 meters per second move speed. So these guys are crazy as hell. They're going to bolt uh, into action. And meanwhile, we're just filling out the rest of our chaff lines over here as well. Fair enough. Mobile beacon coming out for blue? What is this? What is the meaning of this, man? Are we using that this round? We still got 200 supply left to spend uh, on blue. He's actually going to switch a roo and just kind of comb around the outsides a little bit, make sure the building dies, these guys stay as safe as possible. I guess he knows that steel sin is very, very unlikely unless he's selling something to be able to buy uh, two packs of Stangs. And so he's just going to take his bets and throw everything into one side. Additional Storm Callers coming down as well. Yeah, they're very, very rarely put right in the middle, right? Extra Storm Caller drop over here. Interesting choice against this much Crawler chaff. Physically, the Crawler's actually found more value than anything last round. Uh, against Blue. That said... Wasps are going to just swing all the way around and find a very, very, very easy pickup on the building here as well. Ooh. Blue's got these tricks, man. He's the tricksy sort. Look at how fast these wasps are, dude. 
Even while they're building debuff is up, they're going to get to secure a couple of kills as well. They are going to get a level 2 available on these guys now as well. Questionable as to whether these wasps will even get upgrades. I can almost see them eventually being sold. Maybe a couple levels into them, then just sell them off. Um, I guess they're just here to create chaos. In the super early rounds, man. Ooh. This feels like one of those strats that's like... Sort of like a pocket strategy, you know? Where if you were to play like a best of five or something against an opponent and you do this on, on round one, they'll be ready for it every game after that because they'll be thinking, hmm, don't want to lose to that again. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to be put on the back foot immediately because of this BS all over again, you know? Like, screw that. But when it's a best of one, like these, uh, like these weekend tournaments, like these mini tournaments are, Orbital Bombard coming out from Steely. Wow, man. Really would have thunk Underground Threat uh, for Steel Sin. Goes for the Bombard. Covers this right side. That's what Blue is going to go for. He is going to go for the Underground Threat. Which is interesting because with Acolytes on the field and now Stangs on uh, both sides. For Steel Sin, you'd feel like Steel Sin is better equipped to deal with Underground Threat. But okay. We're going to switch around these wasps again. Ooh, this is smart, though, from Blue. Look at this. This is smart, man. So he pivots the wasps over onto the side. These are very, very fast wasps. And he's just going to... Just going to beeline straight for the building. And he's distracting the Mustangs with the Crawler spawn. And so the, the counter to the wasps is not going to be able to react to these guys at all. They're also rank 2 now as well. So they should be able to kill their way through uh, the Arclight and just get to the building very, very easily indeed. Meanwhile, additional storm callers coming down as well. Extra backline crawler chaff, mostly just to watch his flanks, I'd imagine. And here we go, man. It's actually three packs of stangs. I actually missed these guys, so some of the mustangs are going to turn around, but it's not going to be close to enough, and they're actually going to lose their lives extremely, extremely quickly to these wasps. As a result of the building dying like instantly as well, we've also got the crawler swarm on the back, some of which survived against those uh, haste module stangs. So really, these wasps are crazy, dude. The value that these guys are finding is really nuts. That said, cheesy shenanigans like this can only get you so far. They can only win you the first, uh, you know, X amount of rounds. Before they start to fall a little bit flat. Before they start to meet their match a bit, the map just gets too saturated with units that um, you can't really get off the building rushes anymore. Stormcold has got... Enough work to do here. That might be a little bit of a concern. Uh, getting these guys dead. Stangs pushed to the front. Will drop. Okay, never mind. The tanks were actually quite low health. Okay. Chance for Steel Sand, though, to stop the bleed a little bit here, man. Because even with that building rush, that was still a little bit closer for blue than I imagined. Um, Sabertooths for Steel Sand, potentially. Just because they offer the anti-missile tech, they could be a good option for him to pick up with the missile interceptor. Just now that there's four packs of Stormies on the field. Ops into the Phoenixes. He does need to snipe a unit as well. And they do do, obviously, very, very well uh, into the Stormies themselves. As for what Blue's going to pick up, I mean, you can't go the melting point, right? Surely you just can't go the melting point. There's just too many small units on the field. There's no major need for it. Feels like Phoenix is probably the safe option uh, for both players. I really thought Steel Sam might have considered the Sabertooth. And it's actually blue that goes to the Sabertooth. Okay. Is this just going to be a cell? It's either going to be a cell or maybe he's going to use it for like a field maintenance or something. And just use it to buy a crazy, crazy amount of time. Wow. We're going to switch sides again. And look at this again, man. Okay, yeah, he does actually sell on the uh, Sabertooth. So we're going to see a big buy here. So he buys up into the Vulcan. Which, I mean, is re very, very solid indeed. Into Stangs. He's actually going to mass recruit and drop a couple of Vulcans on the field. But look at this again, man. The distracting crawlers on the back. And then just the bum rush. Coming out from the wasps, dude. Oh my god. So they will lose some numbers here, of course. Uh, to the fangs. Ooh, the crawlers get dealt with quite quickly. I'm not sure they make it to building. Oh my god, so, so close. Okay, so, so tight, man. Steel Sin actually gets to hold for a round, and now this is where his phoenixes are going to come in clutch. Without the building being dead, the sledgehammers are going to do a good job of uh, tanking up and buying time 
against these Vulcans for the Phoenixes and the Stangs to get done what they need to get done, and the Vulcans are going to drop extremely quickly now that the Phoenixes are connecting. Okay, Steel Sand stabilizes, man. The game on, dude. Nobody likes to see a one-sided final, you know? Okay. Very nice. Yeah, again, man, the Phoenix pickup is like the safe pickup, right? You can never, like, no army's ever been made worse or regretted picking up Phoenixes, man. Just ain't happened. Extendy Phoenix range comes out. Enhancement module could be a pickup for either player here. Fast teleportation would be crazy, just like full, like full YOLO mode. Uh, if anybody wants to go into that. Barrier is an option for blue. Extendy Phoenix does come out for Steel Sin, so he's trusting in those. And we are actually going to see the Enhancement Module come out and the Cells come out for blue. Starting to just get rid of the Storm Callers. Not rely on those nerds anymore, which makes sense. Storm Callers kind of glorify Chaff Clear against this many Fangs and Mustangs. Vulcans just do a better job, and so slowly cycling these guys out. Upgrade them, sell them, move the Enhancement Module on. Um, does make sense. Good stuff. And now we're starting to delay the Wasps entry into this. That's cool, man. i tell you what else is cool. I noticed just now, oh my god, that's a lot of Phoenixes now. That's a lot of investment in the Phoenixes uh, coming out from Steel Sin. The oil is also going to come down as well from blue. That's going to take out a lot of squishy units. That's going to be a devastating oil drop. Um, but yeah, what else I like is going on here on blue side of the map. That was almost me speaking English, by the way. Is that we've picked up a marksman here randomly just this round as blue. And we run best partner on the Vulcans. Are we actually going to see best partner Vulcans come out in a tournament final? That would be like a Mechabellum fest for me. I've never seen that tech combo and this unit combo actually get utilized in that way. In a Mechabellum final before. Okay, going to ignite that oil just now. It's as devastating as we imagined. Some of the Stang's going to stay back just because of that enhanced range. But frankly, the amount of chaff that is still left alive over here, for example. And even the uh, late arriving wasps coming in just now. Probably going to buy enough time here for Blue to get this. Oh, never mind. He's actually completely out of anti-air units right now. Just the extendy range and the super, super long range phoenixes are going to be able to deal with this. Okay, never mind. Oh my god. Okay, so Blue actually won, like, the value battle this round. He had it in the bag. Just ran out of anti-air to be able to actually deal with the core carried unit for Steel Sin. Is that levels on these Phoenixes? One pack of Phoenixes gets a rank up. They're starting to get real scary now, man. Those Phoenixes are becoming quite terrifying. Almost 200 meter range on those suckers at this stage. That's going to become a big, big concern for Blue now. Portal shield, heavy armor. I don't like any of these for blue, honestly. Um, unless someone has a plan for heavy armor, maybe? Advanced shield device, I guess, gives like some, I don't know, like indirect or like tertiary value. Steel Sin does have a plan for heavy armor. Let's see where this goes. Oh, it's just going to go on the level two tanks. Okay. I mean, that's fair enough, I guess. That's fair enough. Ooh, blue is now in an awkward position. Where he has these storm callers with the enhancement module, but he doesn't have anybody to rank up. He also goes for the heavy armor as well just now. And just plops it on a Vulcan. Okay. Fair enough. And we do see the cell come out on the wasps and oh my god, it's happening. No, I just... Nobody panic, okay? But it's happened. We just saw range enhancement come out for a couple of maximum units. And then best partner Vulcans come out. Wow, dude. Oh my god, I never thought I would see the day that this comes out in a tournament final. Blue, I may not be able to pronounce your name, but by gum, I'm going to do my best to remember these symbols. Because this is crazy as hell. Wow, dude. Alright, alright, alright. Uh, we did see some upgrades come out on the Phoenixes. Extra pack of Phoenixes come down as well. Still saying mostly just doubling down on the army that he's got. But now these Phoenixes have a... Uh, they might have met their match. This might actually be a lot closer now. And with this many Vulcans on the field, basically winning the chaff battle is almost assured uh, now for blue. And so it's going to be a real duel now between these Phoenixes who are now connecting on the Vulcans, but the maximum behind them are staying safe this time because of the range enhancement upgrade. And now we're going to start to see trades with the Phoenixes 
as shots begin to rain in. Some of the Vulcans still standing, tanking for these guys as well. This is going to be real close. It's a hell of a pork battle at the end here. Stormcaller still distracting over here. Looks like Steel Sand has enough to hold on and fend off the sudden maximum deluge on the left side, about trades evenly on the right. Wow, dude, that was tight, though. That was close. Okay, what are we looking at here, man? It's a huge, huge, huge unit drop round. Um, scorpions for Steel Sand. Maybe Sandworms are an option. Sandworms with, like, Sandstorm, though it was recently nerfed. Uh, the Sandstorm duration was recently nerfed in a patch. Fire Badges. I don't think there's any utility for Fire Badges for Steel Sin. He actually does go for the Sandworms. Are these going to be Sandstorm Sandworms? And just try and really, like, gimp the range of all of these, uh, Maximum units, maybe? Looks like he's going to have them arrive quite late. Super, super far back on the far line. We'll keep an eye on what those tech into. Oh, they go into armor first. That's interesting. That is interesting. Meanwhile, Blue hasn't spent a penny yet. He's actually going quite heavy into the Sandworms. Okay. Defense special. Meanwhile, the Fortress pickup comes out for Blue. We get a sell on some of the Stormies. Rank 2 on the Vulks. Another upgrade on the Vulcans as well. Okay, man. All right. I was half expecting to see, like, Aerial Specialization come out on the Maxman. Just to give them that extra edge when it comes to taking out the Phoenixes. Okay, man. Then no Sandstorm on the Sandworms. That is interesting. We also see Anti-Air Barrage come out on the Fortresses too, and just a lot of Fortresses. Holy crap. Okay, man. These Sandworms now have a lot to do. A hell of a lot to do. They're going to take out the flanks uh, on either side, and here they come. Let's see what they can get done, man. There's four Sandworms in total. We'll try and keep an eye on those as they pop up. It's a big, big gamble. Uh, coming out from Steel Sin here. Hoping that these Sandworms are going to do enough. You just buy enough time. Here comes the missiles from the fortresses. Oh, Some of the Phoenix is getting a little bit battered up on either side here. Already, just from the fortress pork. Another huge missile swarm comes in. And oh, yo, 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 yo. This might just not be quite enough, man. The Sandworms are living. They are buying time. But with the missiles coming out of the fortresses, they don't care that their target locked on the Sandworms, man. That is a smart, smart tech pickup. The ability to shoot, obviously, two targets at once. To be taking pot shots at the Phoenixes and tanking and taking out the Sandworms at the same time. With those fortresses? Damn, dude. That is rough going. That is rough going. Obviously, hindsight is a son of a gun, but you kind of wonder now how differently things might have turned out if perhaps Steel Sin had picked up the, the uh, three Scorpions instead. Maybe just picked up range, and then he could be in a position where he can dip into acid scorpions um, and rely on those guys to help take out those fortresses just like double time, you know, and lean into those. Obviously, that's all in hindsight, though, you know. That said, the Vulcans can do very, very low damage to these armored sandworms. In fact, it's doing basically no damage. <laughs> They're going to be able to take the wind, dude. This sandworm had like no physical health, by the way. Oh, my God. Okay. So able to chew out a win, but that's one of those wins where, as Steel Sin, you're thinking to yourself, Jesus, that was close. That was like a butt nipper. That was not a comfortable victory. That was a worrisome victory, you know? Okay. Super heavy armor comes out. I'm guessing that's going to end up on one of the sandworms. It does. We have a big boy sandworm over here now. Oh, the super heavy armor actually goes over here. 3200 health sandworm. Okay, dude. Blue still making his mind up. He does have the option to go into Orbital Bombard here. That would also help out against Phoenixes quite a lot. Very, very difficult to defend against this. With Phoenixes on the field. Um, Steel Sin is defending against the eventuality of Acid Blast over there by the looks. I mean, I don't see any case against Orbital Bombardment for Blue, right? It's, it's just too good. You just plonk it right in the middle. Slightly picked aside. That's also fine. Shield's coming out, so Steel Zed is protecting against this as much as he can, but again, it's the Phoenixes that uh, Blue is wanting to take out here, right? Wow, goes into double shot on the Fortresses, specifically to count. Oh my god, the Phoenixes are not going to do anything this round. It's just too many Fortresses, man. 
It's too many fortresses. Ooh, this is tough. This is really tough going. Yeah, the only thing I can think of for Steel Sin that can do decently against this. Siege mode acid scorpions. Maybe. Um, maybe a triple drop of elite recruit stormcallers with launcher overload. I'm just thinking of something that can just really batter down a ground army very, very quickly. Um, missiles from the Obel Bombard. Hidden and missing. They're doing okay. Okay. The middle, the middle phoenix has actually been decimated very, very quickly indeed. Okay, dude. This could be, this could be a real stinger. This could be a real stinger. Lots of phoenixes going down on the far right side as well. In fact, they're all just gone on the left. And with it, a lot of our firepower. It's going to be up to the big Chungus war factories now. Sorry, sandworms. Uh, to get this done. With the armor. With the super heavy armor enhancement as well. This is the big boy right here. This big Chungus. This big worm. Has got to basically kill everything. Again, it's up against double shot fortresses now. So these fortresses are firing with basically double the firepower. Double the DPS against these guys. They are by far the biggest threat uh, against these nerds. They're taking out lots of little crappy units just now. You kind of want this guy to dive down as soon as possible. Oh, gets caught in the open with the building dead. That's not ideal. Taking staggering amounts of damage, but it does have staggering amounts of health. It's going to dive down, but... Not quite in time, and still steel, uh, still steel sent too. It's a pretty staggering kick to the kipper just now. And now it's another unit drop. Rhino Cell is available. The Scorpions are once again an option uh, for Steel Sin here. He could go down that route. He does have Siege Mode. He does have Acid Attack. So he does have the tech available to potentially go that route. Melting Points, I guess, is like the slightly safer option. Um, you can just go like Melting Point plus Range. And do a pretty good job against this. Goes for the Rhino, which you're going to sell, but into what? Wow, i got to get my pizza out of the oven. Be right back real quick. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, man, some mushroom pizza action. With a little bit of onion rings on the side, man. Oh, it's cheat day. Okay, man. So what the hell is the plan here, man? For our boy Steely, 1900 supply. Let's see where this cache is going to go. Do we have big plans for the sandworms? Underground maintenance gets picked up. Which is tight and all. But the phoenixes are kind of a non-factor now. They also go into replicate. Steel. Dude. Okay. I mean, I love it. I think this is great. Whatever happens now. It's going to be quite the bombshell. Scorpions come out. Oil comes down as well. Ooh. Okay, dude. Any techs on these scorpions, though? It's a little bit risky to go, like, acid scorpions now, full blue. Just because he has so many giants of his own, and once the sandworms get into melee range, uh, any acid that comes down could also be, like, accruing a little bit of friendly fire, which wouldn't be ideal, so I'm quite curious to see. Ooh, he does push the acid button. Okay, man. Well, if you can clip the sandworms on the approach and slow them down with chaff, that could be a biggie, man. Lots of wasps coming out. Ooh. I gotta tell you, my favorite thing to do when I'm going um, going up against sandworms. In fact, in fact, another sandworm actually comes down as well, which you don't want to miss. But um, what I like to do when I'm up against sandworms is just stack as many late arrival fangs as I can. Extra fangs here, maybe extra fangs here and here. Um, and then give them all portable shield. I find that slows the sandworms down so much. Like, they get stuck on late arrival fangs. Uh, so, so much. But all right, man. Huge amount of fire and flames about to go down in the middle. That is a lot of geeks getting pulled right into it as well. Like 50% of the chaff in Steel Sin's army gone right away. These fortresses also have a lot of levels on them now too. They are looking deadly indeed. And once again, the Phoenix is honestly finding a good amount of shots uh, here. But they're just going to be outtraded at this stage. They just can't keep up with the amount of missiles that are coming down. They're going to get a couple fortress kills over here. This is good, man. Sandworm dives. It's going to start to heal up a little bit on this side. Not so lucky on this side, though. The acid, I'm not sure what value it really found in this round. Frankly, there's just so many big hitters on blue side that the sandworms just kind of melt all over the place. I wasn't really able to see. On the grass as well, it's kind of tough to see where the acid is even getting deployed. But oh, yo, 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 dude. This is going to be too much, right? I mean, this is a big boy sandworm. Don't get me wrong. It's going to find a lot of value. Hang on. Can it actually do this? Can it actually pull this off? 
because it's spawning little mini worms as well. And they also... Oh, they don't have the armor upgrade. Okay, I thought maybe they could distract uh, much, much more effectively than that. One little worm actually goes for the building, which is a huge deal. It means that Steel Sin is going to get to fight another day here, man. I don't think these two fortresses are going to have the firepower to get this done. Down goes the big level two. And now it's just wasps hitting a worm. Wow, man. So nobody can actually win this round. <laughs> nobody can actually win this round. But the big carry sandworms with the replicate coming in clutch enough to hold on to the lead. Wow, dude. Okay. All right, all right, all right. Efficient manufacturing, blah, blah, blah. Laser sights could be an option. Uh, I mean, advanced defensive tactics when your armies are this big. You gotta think that advanced defensive tactics is probably gonna be the pickup for both players. Unless someone's got some crazy, like, double mobile beacon drop plans of some kind. Advanced defensive tactics, yeah, it's so good. Like, super, super late in the game, it just gets better and better and better. The bigger your army is, the more units you're buffing up, so... Especially if it's a lot of big boys like this. Um, and honestly, like, the worms as well. Which, by the way, triple tech worms and best partner max, but in a final, like, what are we... What are we doing here, dude? This is crazy as hell, man. This is just nuts. Ooh, that's a big gamble from Steel Sam, man. He goes into the elite marksman, invests more levels into the Phoenixes. Well, most of them are level 3 last round as well, but you know, he goes into the elite marksman. Doubling down on these guys, man. Maybe he had that last round and I just missed it, but I don't think so. Um, wow. That's a big decision that just got made, dude. So the range on the anti-air barrage missiles is 170 meters. These phoenixes now outrange the anti-air barrage missiles from the fortresses, which is a huge, huge deal. That said, the fortresses can still just walk up into range without too much of a problem, right? Especially with our speed specialist or enhanced mobility being pushed just now as well. We also see elite maximum come out on the fortresses too, so these guys are hitting real hard now. Real hard. That's plus 75% damage on the level 3 fortresses, of which there are two. And so the sandworms might be in some trouble this round. We've been leaning very, very heavily on them indeed. And so I think it is smart for Steel Sane, honestly, to take this gamble with uh, Elite Maxman and see if you can lean a bit more heavily on the Phoenixes instead. You don't just want to all in and just rely super, super hard on, on the sandworms to get the job done, right? Like Golden Rule of Mechabellum. Uh, investing everything into one unit type always ends badly. Unless you're doing it for the memes, in which case it's acceptable, of course. But, ooh, look, the fortress is still walking up into close enough range that they're able to clip some uh, of the phoenixes just here. Some loose missiles catching the high level, guys. The phoenixes have a hell of a lot to get done, man. This time, the acid, I'm paying attention, and oh my god, dude. Yeah, as soon as these guys hit in the acid, the fortresses just look at the sandworms. And they just absolutely eviscerate them. Oh, God. This might just be too much, man. Now the fortresses don't care about the range advantage against the phoenixes anymore. There's still too many wasps left alive. Uh, for the phoenixes to deal with at this, this stage as well. And just the mass giant 40k-esque army is finally going to punch through and get that emphatic win that it was threatening for quite a while against Steel Sin. Who, I mean, you look at the final scores, you think that, uh, you know what, Steel Sin just lost by like 2,000, 3,000 points or something. How close of a game could it have been? I feel like that game was really on a knife's edge, you know? It's not really representative of how close it was. And I gotta respect the players from both players, man. Again, dude. Best partner Vulcans and triple tech Giga Chad massive armor sandworms in a damn mini tournament final. That is awesome. Whoever wins in the end. Hey, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you all enjoyed this happy little, very, very late tournament cast. I'm usually a couple of days behind. Uh, with these things, but I do my best to get to them if and where is possible. All right. Thanks for watching, y'all. And I'm going to catch all of you guys just a tad bit later, man.